Welcome to the Commissioner's Report. I'm your host, Jeremy Moretti. And here today, uh, we've got two wonderful guests to talk everything about fire um, going on in, in Polk County. Lots of stuff uh, that you know, you're, you're heading up now. And uh, we've got Commissioner Neil Cumbie and uh, Chief Robert Weech. So thank you guys so much for joining us. And Commissioner Cumbie, I'll, I'll hand it over to you because you guys on the the commission have been hitting up a, a bunch of stuff in our uh, public safety sector lately. Well, thank you, Jeremy. I really, uh, as I was saying earlier when we were talking before we started, I do not deserve uh, much of the credit for what's going on with fire services right now. Chief Weech, I don't know how long you've been here, two years now? Five years. Five years, good yes, Lord. Sir. Time flies. Uh, it does fly, but uh, there's been some serious advancements in uh, Polk County facilities and the fire stations that are being built. They are uh, state of the art without question, maybe the finest in the South right now. I'm sure one day that uh, there'll be some new technology and some stuff that uh, we do not have. But right now with the new stations, they are, um, we're in the best position uh, we've ever been to provide, you know, um, really fire and EMS services from those facilities. And that all started before I came back on the commission. The, the board had been working on uh, building stations and locating stations and trying to figure out where they needed to be uh, situated to best serve the population of the county which as we all know is growing by leaps and bounds and the growth is uh, I think a challenge for all county functions but certainly for fire services uh, and the uh, the chief wants to talk about the training center that we uh, have recently discussed and are going to move forward with when you look at the facilities and I've never been in the current facility, but I did see some photos, and uh, it, it, it's kind of a makeshift situation for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, while while it may have had some benefits to it, uh, it certainly was not uh, state of the art in what uh, our people need now to know how to do their job properly. The 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 fire is uh, the incident is not very often and there's not a lot of opportunities for on-the-job training, so you have to do that before you get the call, and that's the whole idea behind the training center and what the chief's been pushing for, Excellent. and I let him talk about that because he's the one that uh, is the authority on it. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. I think you're being quite humble. Um, the commission has, has been a champion for public safety and fire rescue in general, and we certainly appreciate that, and certainly you're on, you're on the face of that. So we certainly we've got a lot going on in Polk County Fire Rescue. I, I, uh, it's a subject that I like to talk about, and certainly the growth within the county is something that we have had uh, front and center as far as our challenges are. How do we keep the infrastructure in place? How do we get the, the right transport vehicles? How do we get the right engines in place? And certainly the commission has taken a lead on a lot of that. So one of those topics that you talk about was getting the right infrastructure in place as far as fire stations. And certainly we've been working on that. We've got 13 or 14 that we would like to add service to and or replace. We're three or four into those. So we look forward to moving that project along. Certainly what you talked about, it is a, uh, it's a great fire station. I'm very proud of it. Uh, of being involved with it. It is state of the art. It's got cancer initiative built into it because as you know that's one of the things, one of the challenges that fire rescue has now is taking that as carcinogens out of the workplace and making it more of a clean safe environment. That station does accomplish that. So we've come a long way in Polk County in, in addressing some of those issues. I'm excited about the, the three that we have open and certainly the one in Lofman that, that's coming online here real soon and, and the 10 or so that'll come behind that. So great things are coming from Polk County Fire Rescue. You are being humble as from a commissioner standpoint as far as not being involved. You have been heavily involved and we thank you for it. Um, so things are happening in Polk County and definitely things are happening for the better. You mentioned a training center, something that um, I'm especially excited about because you hit the nail on the head is that we, the rescue incidents is growing within the county nationwide. And one thing we don't get to do a lot is fight fire. But certainly that risk is out there. We have to be ready and prepared to, to handle that. And that'll let, the training center will allow us to do that from a perspective that we've never been able to do before. Certainly we train now, we have facilities now, but it's it's been a long time in coming that Polk County kind of graduates into that next level training center. We do have our prototype for it. We do have plans for it. We're, we're doing an RFP here real soon. So we're definitely excited about the possibilities of having a training center and what that'll mean for the level of service that we're able to provide. And, and some of the young people that we hire, putting them through their, their paces at the training center so that when actually the call comes, they can actually perform at the level we expect. So um, 
it, we do deal with a lot. Two years ago was about 105,000 calls for service. Last year it was getting near 120,000 calls for service. That is a direct result of the growth in population that we've seen. Certainly we don't expect that to slow down. So, you know, one of the things that um, the, the commission is very good at is challenge, uh, challenging us from a fire rescue standpoint to take that next step and, and evolve and get better and add people and grow with the grow with the the community that we serve and um, we, we hear you loud and clear and we're working very hard to keep to make sure we keep up with your expectations well with all those calls for service i mean the the expansion of the population we saw that in the census you know in the, the last 10 years it's not going away anytime soon we're getting more people here we still mm -hmm. have places that are very rural mm -hmm. and we've gone through some really dry uh, winter weather here that sure. you know through a freeze and, and whatnot with all those people coming in you know the and freezes like that that, that have come about there's so much more fuel out there that can yeah. put folks in danger and we're getting close to, to fire season could sure. you talk a little bit about you know how in a year like this I know it's been pretty busy the last couple of years in, in right. brush fire season um, how we're preparing this year Certainly, we, we're, we're not short of challenges. As, as you just brought up a lot of them that, that certainly we're concerned about and collectively we're concerned about them. Um, the growth in population and that call volume keeping up. Um, another thing that we're concerned about, we keep an eye on every day, is we're getting closer and closer to what we call fire weather. Now that's that dry season where we, do, we don't have rain. And one of the things we try to make sure is, is that the, the public is aware that this is a bad time to do uncontrolled burnings or irresponsible burnings or, or to have that extra attention to to make sure that they're doing the right things and if they see something they get involved in it because the weather and the environment is ripe for, for a fire to start and get out of control and start threatening people's homes. So one thing we like to preach during this time of year is be very, very careful, be very, very vigilant. And if you see something that we need to get involved with, let us, let us know, let us get involved early so we, can, so we can mitigate that and people's homes and property doesn't get, um, doesn't get threatened by some of that dry season and resulting fires that could come from that. I know that um, a lot of us get emails in the early morning from Billy Abernathy and uh, mm -hmm. I did see that he referenced the Keech, Keech Byron, Keech Byron, yep. uh, mm -hmm. it's the index. drought index, yep. and it, it you know shows uh, how we're situated in, in terms of uh, rainfall, right. and with that, with the freeze that we just had, which was a severe freeze, mm -hmm. there is all kinds of uh, uh, you know stuff out there that would that would really go up in smoke in a hurry. Yeah. So people do need to be careful uh, when they're whether they're burning leaves or um, you know anything around their home, which could get out of hand sure. uh, when you got extremely dry weather, and you know this is some of the driest times of the year we're going into right now, until we get into you know mid-May or even early June. Mm -hmm. So it, it's something to be concerned about. Hopefully, we'll start seeing some green growth here before long, and yes. maybe that uh, danger will go down. Uh, a little bit, but it's something for people to be aware of. And of course, those new stations coming online are going to help out and sure, you know, put us spreading in, our personnel yes. out and, and getting out there. Put us in a position to respond and take care of the community, which is why we get up in the morning. That's why we train. That's why we do the things we do. So we're in a position, and, and the commission and Ms. Commissioner Cummings working hard to make sure we're, we're in a good position to take care of our community. And uh, that's why we do what we do and, and we want to be in those positions. And I just want to say thanks. I, I know you're, you, you came on a, a, as being a humble person and I appreciate that. But I do want to say thanks for your, for your leadership and, and, and you helping get things done from a fire rescue and a safety perspective. It's meant a lot and thank you for that. Well, I happened to see, uh, and I can't tell you exactly the details, it was on the news this morning about uh, a family and they were thanking the paramedics, the fire rescue people. Their son had a traumatic uh, brain injury mm -hmm. and the mom was there uh, making some presentation and she was giving the statistics about the percentage of people that, that don't recover from the kind of injury that he right. received. And I mean, it was like 80 something percent. And then there was 7% uh, that recovered, but you know, mm -hmm. didn't really uh, never recovered fully, mm -hmm. uh, but had you know some some improvement, and then I think it was four percent that actually you know come away and, and really unscathed mm -hmm. from that type of an injury. But they were crediting the the uh, 
rescue folks, and right. I don't remember if it was fire, for how quick they were responding to it sure. and getting uh, him to the hospital where, right. you know, he now will have a normal life. And those are the kind of things like, you know, that's why we need to do this. That's why we need to be ready and we need to have the proper training uh, when you look at that. I think it was on, I think it was on Channel 8 this morning, but it was just a short piece. Right. But it was, it was really uh, nice to see the family out there thanking those folks yeah. for their quick response and really saving, uh, not, not just saving his life, but the quality of life. Sure. That, you know, and we wouldn't you know. be able to do those things without the right equipment and being being positioned right throughout the county, so we can respond in, in a timely manner. And much of what well, we that had is, nothing to do with fire. I don't believe right. it, was, it was. But it's just another. It's yeah. a good point that we're always in a battle against time, whether or not it be a fire or someone's having a medical emergency. So the the, the ability to respond in an appropriate amount of time is something we need to work on. We have worked on it, we have gotten better, and uh, that doesn't come by by accident. It comes with, with direction and people having a vision. So, and it's meaningful, right? We just talked about a family that it's gonna be altered for, for the rest of their lives, and, and it's because of some of the actions we've taken. So that's a great, that's a great example and a great point. Well, thank you guys both for coming in today talking everything fire because yes. there's a lot lot coming around yes, so sir. thank you both for being thank here you. thank you jeremy well that does it for this edition of commissioner's report join us next time <laughs>